اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر ویورز فرینڈز اینڈ برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز اینڈ فرینڈز آئی جسٹ وانٹ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ سم تھنگ رائٹ ناؤ اٹس اباؤٹ دا قران اینڈ سائنس اینڈ دا ابزرویبل ابزرویبل یونیورس But before I describe everything, I just want to give you first the references uh, directly from the Quran. Okay, first is uh, Al-Quran, uh, chapter 47, verse 12. So Allah decreed them as seven heavens, one above and other, in two days, and revealed to each heaven its orders and Allah adorned the lowest heaven with light and protection such is the decree of the exalted the knowledgeable okay in the Quran um, the word that is uh, translated as days it could be also used as period of time so it could be one day it could be a um, billion year it could be trillions of years it could be anything. It basically, uh, best translation would be a period of time. But over here in this translation, I see it says day. Okay, so next uh, verse is Al Quran, chapter 65, uh, verse 12. Allah is the one who created seven heavens from earth like them of corresponding type. Uh, Allah's command descends among them so that you may know that Allah is capable of anything that Allah knows everything. Another verse is Al-Quran uh, chapter 67 verse uh, 3 and 4. Allah is the one who created seven super uh, super we imposed heavens you do not see variations in the formation formations of the compassionate so redirect your sight do you see any creation then redirect your sight again your vision returns to you in defeat and regret I'll also provide all the references below, okay, and you could read them directly from there. Okay, the topic is basically Quran, science, and our observable universe. You know, uh, scientists has already talked about talked about this thing. You know, uh, it's confirmed that there is something called the observable universe. It's basically the lowest stage of heaven. I mean. Uh, the observable universe is basically, you know, the Milky Ways and the galaxies, especially uh, the lights and the stars that it produces. So it's uh, basically something that the scientists that can see up to whatever, uh, up to the limit the light goes, you know, the visible universe. Basically, it's simply it's uh, what, you know, this, the visible universe. Scientists do not know what exists beyond that one. Scientists cannot see what exists beyond that observable universe. And there are many theories about it. That's a different thing. But they do not have any evidence or proof that they could, you know, show it to you. Yeah, we have seen these things. Because that's why it's called the observable universe. There might be theories about what exists beyond that. That's a different issue. But according to science, the observable universe is basically the one that you know the lights there the lights that goes up to there you know it's uh, I'm not a scientist so I'm not you know probably not being able to explain it in the perfect way but I do know it for sure that uh, you know the stars and the lights you know whatever you could see in the universe when you look up there is something called the observable universe and scientists cannot see anything beyond that so there are theories but people don't know what exists beyond that one so in the Quran, you know, it basically Allah says there are like seven stages of skies or seven stages of spaces or seven stages of heavens, okay? And uh, uh, we're in the lowest stage of heaven. 
and the lowest stage of heaven is basically the earth and the other you know the light you know the, all the stars and the lights that whatever you could see the you know the visible universe that's what the Quran talks about so even though science says you know th there's something called observable universe we don't know what exists beyond that the Quran con confirms that you know there are seven stages of heavens the sky spaces and we are in the lowest stages of heaven and the lowest stages of heaven is filled with stars and lights and all those things so I just read the Quran I give you the re references I will also put the quotations the, the references below and I already read it it's in the Quran and the lowest stage of heaven is filled with lights basically and this is all the available universe we don't know what exists beyond that one so there is no way you know any atheist can confirm or say you know we know that there is absolutely no God and that the Quran is we believe it's a, a book of miracle and it's the last revelation from God and we believe God is not part of the creation God is outside of the creation and God is uh, above uh, heaven uh, above his throne up in heaven um, I mean uh, above heaven uh, on his throne up up, 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 up in his up in heaven uh, above his throne basically that is above all it's basically how God is above, all the way up. And this is, that is basically the unseen world. We do not know details about it. We cannot say anything much about it. That is uh, uh, beyond our imagination. And we do not know everything about it. And uh, God is unseen. We have faith in God. Um, we cannot see God from this world. And we will meet God only after the judgment day. And uh, yes, that's what we believe. And we believe God is not any creation, God is not part of the creation, and God is nothing like the creation. So God is uh, outside of the creation, and God is also different and separate from the creation. And uh, any creation cannot be God. So God is different from the creation, God is separate from the creation, and God is also outside of the creation. And if you translate God into Arabic language, it basically, uh, gonna, you're going to come up with the word Allah. Because if you translate the Arabic word Allah it, in English, it's God. But the difference is, uh, we all Muslims say Allah because the word Allah, uh, it, it has no gender. And in Islam, Allah, God has no gender. And uh, uh, in, you know, in English, you could say gods and goddess. So uh, in uh, Arabic language, the word Allah, it has no gender. So it cannot be you know, male god or female god. It can be goddess. And uh, it, Allah is singular. So in like in English you can say gods, but Allah is all, only singular, so in Arabic the word Allah it cannot be plural. So Allah is the perfect and most preferable and the best word uh, to call God with this uh, word basically. So uh, Muslims we believe it's uh, uh, the word Allah is basically it's the perfect name for God as well. And uh, we believe the Quran is the last revelation from God. And it is Quran is Islam is a complete religion and Muhammad is the pro final prophet, the seal of prophet. And Quran is not a book of science, it's a, it's a book of signs from God Almighty, the creator of all creation who is not a creation. Thank you and uh, this is the miracle of the Quran. Thank you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, right now, the today's topic is uh, atheism versus Islam. Let's talk about it. Let me just read what I have written already. To say that there is no God or there is, they both should be based on facts and evidences. 
just like stating Mr. X doesn't exist just because of lack of evidence, it doesn't prove that he doesn't exist. So if my neighbor Mr. X goes missing and police finds no evidence about him, we can't just say he never existed. Humans have been part of this world about 6 million years according to some scientists. One million years ago, there was no evidence for germs, but they did exist. Still, we are not sure whether aliens exist or not. The universe is like an ocean and the world is like a dust in it. So what science has discovered, it is not enough to make a scientific 100% proven statement that there is no God at all and science will never find God. If God exists, science will be advanced enough one day to discover its mystery and it might take billions of years of research. But until then, the claim of that there is no God is equally a blind faith as claiming that there is God for sure. So the best statement a logical person or a scientist could make is this that we don't know yet. Because science has yet to find much more than what we have now. Even if one says the universe came from nothing, that will contradict science because some scientists claim nothing comes from nothing. But some say something can come from nothing and in that case I can say God was created from nothing or is uncreated just like some claim the universe came from nothing but that contradicts the claim that nothing comes from nothing. So my point is sometimes even science can contradict science and be wrong. Rarely but it's possible because nothing is impossible and claiming that God exists doesn't limit the possibilities, but claiming it does not limit its possibilities. Just like 4 plus 3 equals 7, but 4 times 3 equals 12. So both have possibilities and we can't just claim or deny something without having the proper knowledge and evidence of it. There is no scientific statement made by a scientist who shows whether God exists or not. So I can say I don't know is the best answer. But if I am a Muslim or Christian I can also say I have faith in God but atheists claim atheism is not a religion. So an atheist can't say, I have faith that there is no God. So yes, I will state that I believe in my religion, which tells me God exists. So I have faith and I am a believer, but I am not claiming I have the evidence that I can prove the world that Allah exists. I don't have a video record of God and if you want that type of evidence but guess what God has no image so I can show I cannot show God to anyone period besides we are supposed to believe in the unseen and that's where the faith belief plays its role but atheists don't have faith in any god or on religion. According to Islam, we will never see God in this life and God is in heaven 
not in you or me or anywhere else, but up in heaven only. Yes, I believe in hell and heaven and it's my choice, just like you exercise your yours by not believing just like you exercise yours by not be, not having faith and it's okay with me but i disagree that atheists have an open mind since the basic system of atheism is based on denying others faith faiths no matter what they say and it's not that the scriptures do, don't have any scientific statements but because atheists simply don't want to believe and it's a fact that atheists deny the facts found in religious scriptures just to stick to their views which aren't best based on evidence but on blind faith and they do this not because there is no evidence of scientific statements in the scriptures but because they don't want to believe period the quran isn't a book of science but it's a book of science from god quran is not a copy of anything and it's 100 percent word of god in islam according to science torah and bible statements have errors and quran's statements are accurate and word of god is accurate okay what is the other part i want to read okay did islam exist before muhammad peace be upon him god does not born or die he is forever jesus moses muhammad and all other people of bible quran and torah were great messengers prophets of god and not uh, not sons of god they were created by one true god creator allah so any creation can't be the one creator allah so there were messengers prophets of god how can the how can creator be part of what he has created himself so he is not part of any creation again he is not a creation and has no partners no father mother daughter son brother sister wife and no gender simply unique beyond comparable and one and one only from adam to jesus god sent his messages for every generation or period of time but it was always destroyed by mankind and the devil's conspiracy to make to take mankind towards hell because all previous books were messed up by humans allah sent his last messenger not son of god but messenger muhammad peace be upon him وسلم, and sent him quran and its messages to guide humans towards allah and heaven allah has promised to keep the quran same until the day of judgment and challenged humans to create another accurate book like the quran and said if you can't then surrender to your lord the only way of peace and heaven majority of things uh, science has discovered until now 80 percent of quran had all those undiscovered answers from the last 1400 years when science didn't have any answers the other 20 percent answer was in was and is in the quran Maybe it will take science another 1400 years to find it. All 100% answers are in Quran. Science can't prove a single verse of the Quran wrong. If you do a research on Quran, Bible and science, you will find facts. Facts are stranger than fiction. In the Bible it says Jesus bowed his head on the floor just like Muslims bow their head on the floor while praying. You should do research on Bible, Quran and science if you believe in God so you can find facts on Islam. If I, if I teach a parrot a message and send it to someone and parrot tells the message to that person and leaves 
and that person starts uh, saying that parrot is my son that would make no sense because that was my messenger not son jesus was taken up alive and after that people started calling him son of god he came to establish islam and was a messenger of one god christianity started after jesus was gone Jesus will come back and die as, hum as a human and Muslim. Quran is the only accurate 100% words of God and word of God can't have errors. Then it would not be word of God. And according to science, Bibles and Torah state has many errors but they can't prove a verse in Quran wrong. Muslims believe there is no God but Allah and Muhammad peace be upon him. Is the last and final prophet and messenger of Allah. And uh, one more thing, I just want to say, you know, like uh, about the ex-Muslims and atheists. They're basically very arrogant people, you know. And uh, you know, if you if, if you look into the story of Shaitan, you know, the devil, he was arrogant and uh, he knew Allah is a God, and Allah commanded him to prostrate the bow to Adam, and he refused, right? Because he was arrogant. So some atheists, you know, they still have doubt, like maybe there is a God, but they still do not want to believe because they are simply arrogant, you know. And uh, most ex-Muslims, you know, like when I talk to them, you know, uh, I just say, may Allah guide them, you know, they pray for them, may Allah guide them. But they're like, they just uh, act like the shaitan, like the devil, because uh, the shaitan was arrogant and the most ex-Muslims, atheists, they're very arrogant people. And uh, they just... Uh, they just act like shaitan, like they act like the devil. You know, some of them are. That's how they talk. That's how they react. You know, like like the shaitan, the devil was arrogant, right? He refused to prostrate to Adam because he was arrogant. And the shaitan is, is like a disbeliever. The atheists, some of them, you know, they doubt maybe there is a god. They still wouldn't believe because they're just arrogant, like the devil, like the shaitan. Well, I can say, you know, may Allah guide those people to you know, Islam. So. They don't have to burn in hell forever, you know, so if they become Muslim, you know, Allah will, you know, give them paradise and they'll go to heaven. Otherwise, you know, they'll just, uh, one day they will die and uh, unfortunately they'll burn in hell forever, just like the shaitan, the devil. So, you know, I hope they become Muslim again, you know. I don't want to say, you know, they're shaitan, they're devil, but what can I do? Like, uh, that's how they react, that's how they talk, they're so arrogant. That's the problem. They're very arrogant people. May Allah guide them, you know, so they could become Muslim again and they could uh, go to heaven one day. You know, thank you so much for watching. Peace. Goodbye. Hello again. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention is uh, often atheists, uh, ex Muslims, you know, they say, like, who created God? Well, the simple answer is no one. Because God is uncreated, God is eternal for forever. Has no beginning, has no end. Doesn't born, does not die. If something is created, that is not God in Islam. Simple as that. So God cannot be created. Whatever is a creation, is not God in Islam. Allah is the creator of all creation, and Allah is not a creation. So whatever is created, whatever is a creation, is not God in Islam. That is uncreated. And he's the only one who's the creator of all creation, but he is not a creation. Allah is not a creation, but he's the creator of all creation. And Allah is uncreated and is forever. That is God in Islam. So if you say who created God, uh, it's a stupid question because if something is created, that is not God in Islam. Period. God is not a creation, it's the creator of all creation. And you know. If you talk about the observable universe, you know, even scientifically, if you talk about, maybe I do not have the, all the knowledge about it, but or what I know is, uh, there is a limit what you know the scientists or you know people can see in that universe. You know, there's something called the observable universe. So nobody knows what exists beyond that one. There is a limit what people can see. You know, the stars and the lights. You know, in the universe, you know, there are so many stars and you know, there's so much light in the universe. You know, if you look up. So there's a limit, you know, that people can see, like up to what the light goes. Then what is beyond that, what is after that, is called. Uh, people don't know about it. It's, it's basically we can only see up to what is called the observable universe. 
and we do not know what exists beyond that people, scientists cannot say anything about it they don't know that's the ba basic part and you know like the Quran does say like you know there are like seven stages of heaven and the lowest stages of heaven which is filled with you know, stars and lights and stuff like that uh, I currently do not remember exact verse of the Quran but it, it is similar to that what I'm saying if I made any mistake may Allah forgive me but what I do remember right now is the Quran does talk about there are like seven stages of heavens and we're in the lowest stages of heaven and the lowest stage is filled with you know stars and you know the lights all those things basically so according to my understanding this is the lowest stage of heaven these are filled with the stars and lights all those things and the observable universe is up limited to that one we do not know what exists beyond that one and we believe there is one Allah and Allah also mean God in the Arabic language, if you look into the Torah and the Bible of the Arabic language Torah Bible, the Arabic Torah and Bible, the word there is Allah. Because Allah simply actually means God also. You know, the pagan Arabs, uh, you know, they even used to worship idols and they used to call them Allah. So that's not Allah, okay? So uh, Allah is up in heaven in his throne and Allah means God also, okay? But Allah is the perfect word for praising God and you know, in in the Arabic language, you know, the Allah basically has no gender, and in Islam, God has no gender, and you know, there's not it's not like you know gods or you know, goddess or you know or you know male god, female god or many gods, you know, it's like basically singular. It's not even plural. So it's just Allah, one God. That's it. Not four or five in one, just only one. That's it. The Creator of all creation, and. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope it helps. Peace. All the other human beings, most of them, they are blindly following the parents. The Christian, he is a Christian because father is a Christian. The person is a Hindu because father is a Hindu. Most of the Muslims are Muslims because their father is a Muslim. This atheist is thinking his father, his parents may be religious, but he does not believe in the gods which his parents worship. Most of the atheists we realize have become atheists because they believe in science and technology. These people think that science has advanced so much, we don't require any scripture, we don't require any religion, etc. The first question I ask to the atheist is that suppose there is an equipment, there is a machinery which no one in the world has ever seen before. If it's bought in front of you, if it's bought in front of the atheist, and if we ask the question to him that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this machinery or this object, what can be his reply? What can he reply? Suppose a machinery who no one in the world has seen, if it's bought in front of the atheist and he's asked the question, who will be the first person who will tell you the mechanism of this machinery or object? The reply the atheist will give you is the first person who will tell you the mechanism is the manufacturer some may say the creator some may say the inventor some may say the producer whatever they say it will be somewhat similar either they say the creator the manufacturer the producer the inventor it will be somewhat similar just keep it at the back of your mind then ask him the next question that how did our universe come into existence so the atheist will tell us that initially there was a primary nebula then there was a big bang there was a secondary separation which gave rise to galaxies, the sun, the moon, and the earth on which we live. This we call as a Big Bang. When did you come to know about this creation of the universe? So he will tell you about 30, 40 years back, the scientists that discovered this. You ask him the question, but what you're talking about the Big Bang is already mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, Avalam yaralazina kafuru. Do not the unbelievers see Anna samawati wal arda huma, that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. What you're talking about the Big Bang is already mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? So the atheist will say, maybe it's a fluke. No problem. Don't argue with him. You continue. The light of the moon, is it its own light? Or reflected light so the atheist will tell us 
that previously we thought the moon has its own light. Recently we have come to know in science, recently means 100 years back, 200 years back, we have come to know that the light of the moon is not its own light but a reflected light. The Quran mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, that blessed is he who had placed the constellation in the sky and placed therein a lamp, a sun, having its own light and moon having reflected light or borrowed light. The Arabic word used for moonlight in the Quran is munir or nur, meaning reflected light or borrowed light. Who could have mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago that the light of the moon is not its own light but reflected light which we have come to know recently? The atheist may say, your prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, maybe he was an intelligent man. Don't argue with him. Continue. The world that we live on, what's the shape of this earth on which we live? The atheist will tell you, it is spherical. When did we come to know? So he will tell us, 19, it was 1597 when Sir Francis Drake, when he sailed around the earth, that he proved that the earth was spherical. But the Quran says 1400 years ago, in Surah Naziat, chapter 79, verse number 30, Wal arda baada zalika dahaha. And thereafter, we have made the earth egg shape. The Arabic word dahaha, one of its meaning is the earth is an expanse. The other meaning is derived from the Arabic word dhuya, which means an egg. And it doesn't refer to a normal egg. It refers to the egg of an ostrich. And we know the world is not completely round like a ball, but it is geospherical in shape. It is starting from the pole. And if you analyze the shape of the egg of an ostrich, that too is geospherical in shape. Who could have mentioned 1400 years ago that the shape of the earth is geospherical? Again, the atheist may say, you know, your prophet, maybe he's super intelligent. Don't argue with him. You can continue. When I was in school, I had learned that the sun was stationary. It revolved, but did not rotate about its own axis. So the atheist will say, is that mentioned in the Quran? I say, no, that is what I learned in school. When I passed my school in 1982, approximately 12 years back, I had learned the sun was stationary, did not rotate about its own axis. But the Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, It is Allah who has created the night and the day. The sun and the moon. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. So the Quran says that besides the sun revolving, it even rotates about its own axis. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago? And the atheist will be silent. There will be a long pause. Don't wait for the reply. You can keep on continuing. Today, science tells us that the universe is expanding, which is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 47. The Quran speaks about the water cycle which we learned in school. It was Sir Bernard Palissy in 1580 who first described the water cycle, how the water evaporates from the ocean, forms into clouds, moves into the interior, falls down as rain. This water cycle is spoken about in great detail in the Quran in several verses. In Surah Az-Zumur, chapter 39, verse 21. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse 24. In Surah Hijar, chapter 15, verse 22. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse 48. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse 48 to 49. In Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. In Surah Mul, chapter number 67, verse number 30. In Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. There are hundreds of verses in the Quran which only speak about the water cycle which science has discovered recently. We can keep on to talking that today we have come to know that the plants have got sexes which we did not know earlier. Quran says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 53, that the plants have got sexes, male and female. Today, we have come to know that there are two types of water, sweet and salty. And there is a barrier between them, which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 53, and Surah Rahman, chapter 55, verse 17 and 18. It is Allah who has let free two bodies of flowing water. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier between them. Today, science tells us that it is the mountains which prevent the earth from shaking, 
which is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 6 and 7. The Quran speaks about biology that we have created every living creature from water, every living thing in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30. Quran mentions this 1400 years ago. The Quran speaks about zoology, about the lifestyle of the spider in Surah Ankabut, chapter 29, verse 41. About the ant in Surah Namal, chapter 27, verse 17 to 18. About the bee in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 66, 68, 69. The Quran speaks about embryology in Surah Alaq, chapter 96, verse number 1 and 2. We have created the human being from Alaqa, a leech like substance, which we have come to recently. The Quran speaks about the embryological stages in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 12 to 14. You can go on talking about the scientific points. There are more than a thousand verses in the Quran which speak about science. After every scientific fact, you ask the question, who could have mentioned that in the Quran? The only reply the atheist can give you is the creator, the, the cherisher, the manufacturer, the inventor, the producer. This creator, this manufacturer, this producer, this inventor, we Muslims call him as Allah. My name is Shakir and I'm a mechanical engineer student. I would like to ask you a question that uh, how can you prove to an atheist scientifically the existence of God? The brother has posed the question. How can you scientifically prove the existence of God Almighty, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To especially to an atheist who does not believe in God. The first thing I will do is that I will congratulate that atheist. I congratulate him. You know why? If you look around us, he is a Hindu because father is a Hindu. He is a Christian because father is a Christian. Some Muslims are Muslim because their fathers are Muslim. This person, though he may be coming from a religious background, he does not believe in the false God which his parents attribute to. So he does not believe in God. I am congratulating him because he has accepted the first part of the Shahada, the first part of the Islamic creed, La Ilaha, there is no God. Now my job is to prove illallah, but Allah, which I shall do inshallah. To the other people, I have to first remove the wrong concept of God and then prove the right concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here half my job is done. He has already said La Ilaha. There is no God. Now I have to prove illallah, but Allah, which I shall do inshallah. You ask this atheist, that suppose there is an object, an unidentified, maybe a flying object, which no one in the world has seen. No human being in the world knows about this object. If it's brought in front of you, and if you're asked that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this unidentified object, you have to ask him the question. Who is the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this new object which no one in the world has seen? After thinking for a while, he'll give the answer. The person who will be able to tell you the mechanism, the first person, is the creator of that object. Some may say manufacturer, some may say producer. Whatever they say, don't grapple with the word, accept it. It will be somewhat similar, either creator or producer or manufacturer. But remember what he has told you, keep it in your mind. Then ask him the next question. How did the universe come into existence? How was it formed? He will tell you by the Big Bang Theory. Tell him, the Quran mentions in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30, about the Big Bang Theory. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago? So he will tell you, maybe it's a fluke. Don't argue with him. Next part of the question. We did not know that the light of the moon is reflected light. We came to know recently. You ask him, he'll tell you, yes, yes. The light of the moon is reflected light. It's not its own light. When we discovered, he will tell you recently, yesterday, 50 years back, 100 years back, yesterday in science. You tell him, the Quran mentioned that the light of the moon is reflected light 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? Maybe somebody had a wild guess. Don't argue with them. Continue. We thought the sun was stationary. You ask him, is it stationary? He'll say, no. It's rotating and revolving. When you learn this, he will tell you yesterday. 
50 years back, 100 years back. Quran mentioned this 1400 years ago. He will hesitate, but may say, maybe some intelligent person wrote it. Don't argue with him. Continue. How was the universe initially? What a celestial matter. He will tell you, it was smoke. How did you come to know? We have got proof, we have got evidence. You tell him, Quran mentioned this 14 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? He will hesitate. Don't wait for response. Continue. Keep on posing question after question. All that I give in the lecture, keep on posing one question after the other. That, what a cycle. How do we come to know about it? Quran mentioned 14 years ago. About every living thing made from water. Who could have mentioned that? Quran speaks about botany. The male and female. Who could have mentioned that? Pose one after the other and ask the question, who could have written that? Then you tell him that there is a theory known as theory of probability. That if you have two choices, out of which one is right, the chances that you will make the correct choice, just at random, is one in two. For example, if I toss a coin, it can either be heads or tails. The chances that I'll be right will be one in two. If I toss it twice, the chances that I'll be right both the times will be 1 upon 2 multiplied by 1 upon 2, that is 1 upon 4, 25% chance. If I toss it thrice, chances I'll be right all three times, 1 upon 2 multiplied by 1 upon 2 multiplied by 1 upon 2, it's 1 upon 8, 12.5%. A dice has got six sides. If I throw a dice, the chances that at random I'll be correct is 1 upon 6. If I throw it twice, the chances that both the time I'll be right will be 1 upon 6 by 1 upon 6, 1 upon 36. This is called as theory of probability. If I throw the dice twice and then toss a coin, all three being right will be 1 upon 6 by 1 upon 6 by 1 upon 2. is 1 upon 72. So you ask him, the chances may be, if you ask, what is the shape of the earth? There are various shapes. Some may say it is flat, some may say it is triangular, some may say it is hexagonal, some may say pentagonal, some may say heptagonal, some may say square. Say there can be ten shapes. Some may say it is round, it is spherical. The chances that if anyone makes a wild guess, it being correct, is one upon ten. The light of the moon, it can either be its own light or it can be reflected light. The chances that you make a wild guess and it being correct will be 1 upon 2. The chances that both shape of the earth and light of the moon being reflected light, both being correct, if you make a wild guess, it will be 1 upon 10 multiplied by 1 upon 2, it is 1 upon 20. What can the living creatures be made of? Some may say sand, some may say stone, some may say aluminium, some may say gold, say a thousand materials you can name. Some may say water, some may say silver, a thousand materials. The chances that you make a wild guess, and one of them being right, according to mathematics, is one upon a thousand. The chances that all three being correct, the earth is spherical, light of the moon is reflected light, and every living creature created from water is correct, will be 1 upon 10, multiplied by 1 upon 2, multiplied by 1 upon 1000. Answer comes to 1 upon 20,000, or 0.005%. Quran speaks about scientific science more than a thousand verses. In three verses, the chance comes to 0.05%. If you apply probability theory to all this being at random chance, it will come to zero negligible. And in maths, anything 1 in 10 raised to 50, it's equal to zero. So you ask your atheist friend, who could have written this? The only answer he can give you is his first answer, the creator, the manufacturer, the person who has produced it. That's the only answer, there's no other answer. What science is saying today is they are not eliminating God. They are eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah. They are not eliminating God, but models of God. I hope that answers the question.
اقبل يا حافظ القران ولتسمع الدنيا حداك We modern astronomers have been studying very small fields of the universe. We concentrated our efforts to, for understanding of very small parts because by using telescopes we can see only a very few parts of the sky without thinking all the universe. So uh, by reading Koran and by answering to your questions, I think I can find my future way for investigation of the universe. So Muhammad was a very ordinary man. He couldn't have read didn't know to write. In fact, he was a illiterate. And uh, we're talking about 1,200 years ago, you have someone, an illiterate person, making profound pronouncements and statements uh, that um, are amazingly accurate of a scientific nature. And uh, I don't, I personally can't see how this could be a mere chance. There are too many accuracies. And like Dr. Moore, I have no difficulty in my mind reconciling that this is a divine inspiration or revelation um, which led him to these statements. I find it very interesting that this sort of information is is in the uh, ancient scriptures of the Holy Quran, and uh, I have no way of, of knowing where they would come from, but uh, I think it is extremely interesting that they are there and that this work is going on to discover uh, the meaning of some of the passages. Well, I would think it must be the divine being. Summary. The Quran describes not only the development of external form, but emphasizes also the internal stages, the stages inside the embryo of its creation and development, emphasizing major events recognized by contemporary science. Thank you for your attention. Uh, as a scientist, I can only deal with things which I can specifically see. Uh, I can understand embryology and developmental biology. Uh, I can understand the words that are translated to me from the Koran. Uh, as I gave the example before, uh, if I were to transpose myself into that era, knowing what I knew do today, and describing things. I could not describe the things which uh, were described. Uh, I see no reason, uh, I see no evidence for the facts uh, to refute the concept uh, that uh, this individual, Muhammad, had to be developing this information from someplace. Uh, so I see nothing here in conflict with the concept that uh, divine intervention was involved in in what he was able to do. In a relatively few ayah is contained a rather comprehensive description of human development from the time of commingling of the gametes through organogenesis. No such distinct and complete record of human development, such as classification, terminology, and description 
existed previously. In most, if not all, instances, this description antedates by many centuries the recording of the various stages of human embryonic and fetal development recorded in the traditional scientific literature. يتلوه أحمد ابدنا وهي التي عطشت لقطر هداية هتاني سبحان منزله Professor Moore was also elected to the membership of the Royal Medical Association of Canada, the International Academy of Cytology, the Union of the American Anatomists, and the Union of North and South American Anatomists. Professor Moore has published many books on clinical anatomy and embryology. Eight of them are used as reference works in medical schools and have been translated into six languages, namely Italian, German, Portuguese, Spanish, Greek, and Chinese. It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God or Allah because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered, uh, discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God or Allah. It follows, I think, that not only is there no conflict between genetics and religion, but in fact, religion that God explains by adding revelation to some of the traditional scientific approaches. Uh, that there exists things in the Quran shown centuries later to be valid with support knowledge in the Quran having been derived from God. Thank you very much. قدره واصل خطاك على هدى القرآن هونا فسير في الأرض لا تعجل بها ما أنت thinking of many of these questions and thinking uh, where Muhammad came from he was after all a Bedouin I think it is almost impossible that he could have known about things like the common uh, origin of the universe because scientists have only found out within the last few years with very complicated and advanced technological methods that this is the case. Somebody who did not know something about nuclear physics 1400 years ago could not, I think, be in a position to find out from his own mind, for instance, that the earth and the heavens had the same origin or many other of the questions that we have discussed here. <laughs> انهض إلى العليا بغير تواني واصدح بصوتك تاليا ومرتلا واقرأ وحرك نشوة الإيمان يا حامل القرآن يا شبل الهدى انهض إلى العليا بغير تواني واصدح بصوتك تاليا ومرتلا Uh, hello, uh, I'm basically going to talk about the Quran and science right now and uh, uh, I do believe in hadiths, I am a Sunni Muslim, I do believe in hadiths, uh, but I do want to say something, the Quran was uh, basically written down in the time of Prophet Muhammad and some hadiths were written down in the time of Prophet Muhammad and some hadiths were written down after the death of Prophet Muhammad. So Hadiths are basically the teachings of Prophet Muhammad which were narrated, uh, you know, heard from other people and then later on it was written down after the death of Prophet Muhammad. So I do believe in Hadiths, I am a Sunni Muslim, but uh, the Quran was already written down in the time of Prophet Muhammad and the Quran is 100% words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the word of God in Islam and Hadiths are words and teachings of the Prophet Muhammad which were some mostly written down after the death of the Prophet. But I do believe in hadiths and I do believe in the Quran and I am a Sunni Muslim, I repeat that one. But I just want to say one more thing, like you know, if there is something in the hadiths and it contradicts with the Quran, uh, we just ha simply refuse that one. So if there is any hadith that goes against the teachings of the Quran, we just simply reject that one. Because Quran is more superior and was written down in the time of Prophet Muhammad. 
and some hadiths you know which were uh, there are also some hadiths which are weak hadiths daif hadiths you know sound hadiths i mean like there are uh, authentic hadiths you know sahih hadiths and there are also weak hadiths and uh, there are also hadiths which are some uh, were written uh, many many years after the death of prophet and some of them are considered really weak and there are even around the world uh, there are some people who even follow some fabricated hadiths so, but I do believe in the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad 100% and uh, I am a Sunni Muslim but uh, and I want to say something you know but the Quran is number one in Islam and if there is anything that contradicts with the Quran we just uh, don't follow that one but I love my Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him وسلم, and I love Islam and I love the Quran and uh, but if there is anything that contradicts with the Quran we just refuse that one okay we don't follow that one even if it was uh, written after the death of Prophet Muhammad written by other people so all the hadiths, there are many hadiths you know the, that actually are beautiful hadiths logical hadiths that make sense and there are many hadiths you know the, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad some were written in the time of Prophet Muhammad some were written after his death and there are many hadiths that actually match with the Quran you know there are many uh, hadiths even they were written many many years after the death of the Prophet but they actually match with the Quran so we have to follow them 100% and there are also you know uh, there are hadiths you know uh, which were written after the death of Prophet Muhammad they, they, they are so accurate they even match with science you know there are so many scientific mir miracles in the hadiths also and you know the scholars you know like I said you know, there are many hadiths match with the yes what I was saying is uh, you know there are many hadiths you know that uh, matches with the Quran. There are many, many hadiths that also matches with the science. You know, whatever science has discovered so far in 2016. So there are definitely many hadiths which is 100% accurate, and Prophet Muhammad did teach us those things. And I believe in them. I love them. I respect them. And uh, even the scholars, you know, there's something called the science of hadiths. Basically, you know, they uh, look into the hadiths and who said those things how it was narrated and they look into the science of hadith the scholars they have a method of saying which is more accurate and which is less accurate again i'm a sunni muslim thank you but i just want to right now focus in the quran right now a little bit so i want to talk about quran and science and uh, quran and evolution and also about uh, uh the water on earth how it came and what the quran says and uh, uh, we do believe in Adam and Eve. We believe in Adam and baby Hawa. Eve is baby Hawa and Adam is Adam. We believe we're all children of Adam and Eve. Adam was the first human and uh, Eve was the first woman. And we're all children of Adam and Eve and we do believe in Adam and Eve for sure. We are all children of Adam and Eve and the Quran says that, Hadith says that. And we are children of Adam and Eve and uh, we believe in Adam and Eve 100%. Now let's read what I have uh, written over here. If I make any mistakes, may Allah forgive me. And uh, I'm just trying to share my ideas and knowledge. But if I make any mistakes, may Allah forgive me. But again, uh, we are all children of Adam and Eve, and the Quran and Hadith they confirm that one. They are the first. They were the first humans. Okay, let's read what I have written. May Allah forgive me if I make any mistakes. But my intention is to, you know, spread Islam. That's all. Thank you. It is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago, even before scientists found the genetic similarities of monkeys, apes, and humans. What scientists have found is true, but their opinion of the theory of evolution is wrong. Quran is word of God and it has the information of past, present, and future. God revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whatever God wanted to and kept some information only to God by revealing some and not, and not revealing some. But still Quran is one great source of information from God because of okay, um, because of their constant defiance and blasphemy of God Almighty's divine and holy words. Not all humans, but some people were transformed into swines and apes during Prophet Moses' time. Peace be upon him. Okay, now the Quran says, Say, shall I point out to you something much worse than this? 
as judged by the treatment it received from God? It's a question mark after that. Those who incurred the curse of God and his wrath. W-R-A-T-H, wrath. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing something not so accurate. You know, I do have an accent, I guess, so I just pronounce it the way I could. Okay. Uh, where I was, yeah. Those who incurred the curse of God and his wrath. After that, it says, uh, those of whom some be transformed into apes and swines, those who worshipped evil. These are many times worse in rank and far more astray from the even path. The Noble Quran 560 is chapter 5 verse 60. That was about the evolution, so think about it. <clears throat> now the next part about rivers, oceans and world. Scientists don't know for sure, perhaps the most popular theory says that shortly after the Earth formed, millions of asteroids and comets saturated in water, slammed into the planet, releasing their payloads to form Earth's oceans. Scientists are working hard to understand more about what our planet was like billions of years ago and each new piece of information moves us closer to understanding how Earth's oceans, lakes and rivers came to exist. But the Quran already has the answer because the Quran is more superior than science and it's the only 100% true book of God's words. Okay, now what the Quran says. Okay, this is uh, okay, the word is T H T N C F R T. I think it's okay. Let me just read it. Thenceforth, where your hearts hardened, they became like a rock, and even worse in hardness. For among rocks, there are some from which rivers gush forth, others there are which when split asunder send forth water and others which think for fear of Allah and Allah is not unmindful of what ye do 274 Al-Baqarah Surah Al-Baqarah verse 74 Al-Quran Surah chapter 2 verse 74 Okay, now I'm just going to read some other stuff Quran is not a copy of anything and there is no evidence to say such statements in the Quran are against Torah and Bible Torah and Bible has so many errors and according to science 80% of Quran matches with science and other 20% of Quran science doesn't have answers Maybe it will take a couple of hundreds of years to find out more find out for Science. According to historians, original Bible doesn't exist anymore. According to Islam, Torah and Bible were books of Allah, but humans have destroyed their originality. So Quran is the last and final word of God, and Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of Allah. Peace be upon him. Sallallahu Quran is not a copy of anything and it's 100% word of God in Islam. According to science, Torah and Bible statements have errors and Quran statements are accurate and word of God is accurate. I hope you guys think about it and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, may Allah guide you and may Allah bless you. Thank you. Peace be upon all. Take care. Peace. Goodbye.